this service to commemorate the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe is coming from Plymouth Hoe. Behind me is the Royal Navy Memorial, which lists the devastating cost of war in the thousands of names recorded from two world wars. Alongside it are the monuments to the Merchant Navy and the RAF and Allied Air Forces. And at one end of the hoe is a peace garden, and at the other is the Royal Citadel home to 29 Commando Royal Artillery Regiment, the oldest military base in continual use in the British Army. And there are civilian uh, casualties to remember today as well. Uh, Plymouth, like Exeter, was heavily bombed in the war. In fact, with the highest proportion of civilian casualties of any city in the UK. So it seems right to start our time together with uh, most people in the privacy of their own homes on a note of reflection and penitence, remembering the pain and destructiveness of war and the evils which still divide our world. So we'll use the litany of reconciliation which is used daily at the Cross of Nails at Coventry Cathedral. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The hatred which divides nation from nation, race from race, class from class. Father, forgive. The covetous desires of people and nations to possess what is not their own. Father, greed which exploits the work of human hands and lays waste the earth. Father, our envy of the welfare and happiness of others. Father, forgive. Our indifference to the plight of the imprisoned, the homeless, the refugee. Father, forgive. The lust which dishonours the bodies of men, women and children. Father, forgive. The pride which leads us to trust in ourselves and not in God. Father, forgive. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Perhaps you'd like to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. So rejoicing in God's mercy and grace, and the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed in our lifetime, a hymn of praise.
I am Suzanne Sparrow. I was born in Plymouth in 1924. Because I was bombed out of Plymouth, I came to live in a wonderful place called Newton Ferrers. And at the age of 17, I volunteered to join the uh, Wrens. And I became a boat's crew Wren. I was trained as the ordinary sailors alongside them. And we ran the harbour boats in Plymouth Harbour. It was a bit of an anticlimax in some ways, but there was a great feeling of relief. I was very conscious of the fact that I was lucky I had come through the war, and there were many of us who had come through, but we were very saddened by those who had lost their lives. Really, we hoped there'd never be another European war, but we were really hardly able to think broader than that because we had to remember that there were still people fighting out in the Far East. It would be a very strange world that we were looking at. But of course we were still um, very restricted. We were um, for food and for clothes. So in a kind of a way we slid from being scared stiff about what happened in the war and the fact people were fighting on the ground, we were still in a war atmosphere, not so similar to what people are suffering today. I had a very strong faith, which I still have, and there was a feeling that really despite all that had gone on and what people had been through, there really is a God somewhere and that he had brought us through. We need to remember that now too, very much so, that behind us there is, we have a strong faith and that things will improve. And eventually, of course, after the war, Things did improve, but it was slow. And we have to remember, that is what we are facing now. But we will get through, but it will be slow. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dave Lindenny, uh, and I'm proud to be the commanding officer of 29 Commando Regiment, Royal Artillery. Uh, we are humbled to live and work in the Raw Citadel, uh, which is one of the finest 17th century fortifications in Europe, located on Plymouth Hope, uh, and I'm blown away uh, on a daily basis by the level of support we receive from the city of Plymouth, a city that supports us in the home base, but more importantly, it sustains us and the wider regimental family when we're deployed overseas. Amid the COVID-19 global pandemic, uh, Plymouth has demonstrated as it did 75 years ago, extraordinary levels of courage, of compassion, of community, of selflessness, of hope and of faith. And as Commando Gunners, we are incredibly proud to be part of the fabric of this great city. Uh, and as a man of faith, I was delighted uh, when Bishop Nick asked me to do the Bible reading for the 75th anniversary VE Day a reading from the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 14 to 21 bless those who persecute bless and do not curse them rejoice with those who rejoice weep with those who weep live in harmony with one another with one another do not be haughty but associate with the lowly do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. If your enemies are hungry, Doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome.
overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Today is a day of many different emotions. Gratitude, sorrow, reflection, hope. 75 years ago, the nation overflowed with joy and relief. But those emotions are tempered by the anxieties now of the circumstances in which we find ourselves in. But the words of our reading urge us not to be overcome by evil, but to overcome evil with good. Part of the problem is that evil is often so much stronger, more blatant, apparently, uh, than goodness. We saw it in the Nazi atrocities of the last war, the warped ideology that led to Auschwitz and Belsen. We see it still in the terrorist prepared to maim and to kill for the publicity and fear it brings, in the thug hurling racist abuse, uh, the corrupt dictator cynically exploiting his impoverished nation. And if evil is strident, good is so often self-effacing. It's quiet and unobtrusive. It's there in the quiet acts of generosity, of kindness, of forgiveness, of friend and stranger. In those who in the present crisis risk their lives to care for the sick or to keep normal life going for the rest of us. Just as we saw it in the courage and sacrifice of our grandparents' generation. Into our complex world, the Apostle Paul writes, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And he's able to write that because he has seen what God has done in Jesus Christ. That when evil had done its worst, taken the most wise and caring person the world has ever known and nailed him to a cross, God had turned tragedy to triumph, despair to hope, death to life. War is won not just by military courage, but by moral courage, by the readiness not to be overcome by evil, but to overcome evil with good. And the same determination shapes our peace as well. After the Falklands War, General Sir Jeremy Moore quoted these words from C.S. Lewis. The sun looks down on nothing half so good as a household laughing together over a meal or two friends talking over a pint of beer or a man alone reading a book that interests him. All economics, politics, laws, armies and institutions, save in so far as they prolong and multiply such scenes, are a mere ploughing the sand and sowing the ocean. Collective activities are of course necessary, but this is the end to which they're necessary. We give thanks today for the victory won 75 years ago by our armed forces that has made such freedoms possible for us to enjoy. And we ask that in his mercy, God would enable us to, not to be overcome by evil, but to overcome Oh,
Let us pray. As we come together with thankfulness, we pray for nations still devastated by war, for their people and their leaders, and for those who suffer the effects or memories of past wars, for veterans, for those who mourn, and for all innocent victims whose lives have been shattered by the cruelty of others. Amen. O Lord our God, as we remember, teach us the ways of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us hope. And as we give thanks for the sacrifices of the past, help us to make your future in this world until your kingdom come. Amen. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those men and women who have died in active service, particularly in the Second World War, those whose sacrifice brought us victory in Europe. And as we honour their courage and treasure their memory, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. When I was a vicar in Plymouth, I took a number of funerals of young men who were killed in Afghanistan. As you can imagine, these were deeply sad and poignant occasions. But they also had a note of pride as we gave thanks for the courage and sacrifice that these young men had shown. At each of the services, I'd say a few words and the commanding officer would also come and read or say something. And at one of the services, the commanding officer of the regiment read these words originally from President Roosevelt. They've become quite well known since. And they're all about being involved in life and not just sitting on the sidelines. I'll read them. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again because there's no effort without error and shortcoming, who at their best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. That's true for those who fought for our freedom 75 years ago, just as it's true for those who've got involved and look after us in our present crisis. And the Christian faith tells us that God too is there, actually in the arena in the dust and sweat and blood of Jesus, so that he might overcome evil with good and call us to follow in his steps. So in this prayer, we are invited to give ourselves to be part of his work in our world, to live out his life and light. So you might like to join in saying these words with me. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. For your mercy and your truth's sake.
to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, and the commonwealth, and all people, peace and concord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting. Blessing of God all.